Now last year, I had an unbelievable trip at Choke catching big crappie. And so in my mind, I thought, hey, I want to fill the freezer for deer season. I want to get out there and catch some of those giant crappie again. Well, we get down there and the fishing is just flat tough. Well, we're joining Clark and Michael for a mid-afternoon outing on the water. They've already landed a few fish, but like Clark said, the fishing's been tough and they're not seeing much of the species they're trying to drop hooks on. There we go. You know, the thing is, when you've got pan optics looking down there, you see so many fish. There's a lot of crappie, there's white bass. We caught white bass, drum, catfish, crappie, and we're gonna catch bass before it's all said and done. Put him in the cooler. There's one. Nope. Doing good he on catfish. He was sitting fish. up there on the top. He was? Yeah, he was. This is a crappie, I'm pretty sure. Not a great big one, but a keeper. Really, you look at my setup here, I'm really just got a drop shot setup, putting a mint on there, catching nice crappie. What do we think, crappie or not crappie? Uh, nah. Gonna be a, definitely a, gonna be a crappie. Nope, catfish. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a heck of a missed call right there. <laughs> well, really, I was just hoping. <laughs> it's a nice one though. Got one. <laughs> so what we're doing is, is we're going along finding brush pile, just like anybody else would, using side view. And every brush pile we find, you know, we've caught three or four crappies so far, but got a load of catfish. Now I've had that happen here before where I caught catfish, I caught white bass. A lot of times the ones that are up in the top of the brush have been crappie in the past, whereas the ones on the bottom, but this one is every fish. So maybe it's a depth thing. I mean, we'll end up going deeper, we'll try shallower, we just gotta try to figure it out. We tried fishing any kind of brush pile we could see, whether it be like a salt cedar or a big giant sunken tree or, you know, something that somebody sunk or, you know, some of it looked like culverts. We tried everything that we could find and, you know, there's fish on every one of them. The crappie just didn't cooperate that well. We were catching a lot of catfish. I can't complain too much because we were getting a bite every now and then. But when you get on a body of water and you're going after one specific species and that species does not bite, you get to where you don't even want to set the hook on a catfish. I mean, I know all you guys watching that love catching catfish, eating catfish, you're thinking, I mean, why in the world is he not excited about the number of catfish he's catching? Well, because I came here to crappie fish, not catfish fish. And I have a hard time switching gear. Catfish. Yeah. I could have told you that before you ever jerk. No! Oh, no! You're going to have to measure him. Called that wrong. We sure did. <laughs> I mean, like we knew what we were doing yeah. and we did not. It gotta be 10, right? 10 mouth closed. He keeps. Finally. I got one too. You win that one. I did. <laughs> but I don't think he's long enough. We're at least getting some crappie bites. You know, we found a pile. I can see a lot of fish in there. I've seen a lot of fish on every pile we've been to today. And that's the thing about it is when you're on a good lake, Choke Canyon Reservoir, there's lots and lots of fish a lot of times. And so you got to figure out and decipher what they are. You know, crappie fishing is Usually, for me, it's a vertical type of fishing where I'm getting straight upon something, and live scope makes crappie fishing easy. And I have actually heard from people that if you're a crappie fisherman, you're using live scope. And that's just the way it is. You can actually see groups of fish, you can see the fish move up there to your bait, 
The maddening thing about this trip was is we could see them, but they just wouldn't bite. They'd kind of sponge that minnow and you'd kind of feel them and you pull and they'd get your bait, you know, and it, it was just maddening. But sometimes, you know, it just doesn't go exactly like you think. That's okay. We, we made the best of what we could, caught some fish, got lots of bites, and had fun fishing together. Hey, getting started this morning. Yesterday afternoon, we caught a few, caught a ton of catfish. I mean, I know catfish are biting good, but I don't want catfish, I want crappie. Last year we came and we caught more crappie than we could even deal with, giant, giant slabs. And so I got my son-in-law, Michael Worsig. We have fun fishing together. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> it ought to be a fun morning. Let's go see what we can do. You know, the way I've got my screen set up is I've got one of them on panoptics and panoptics has just kind of become the essential one because I can look around and see everything that I need to see. I can see brush, I can see fish. And then I also got any waypoints I want to see, I'll see on here. I can still look out to the side on side view, look down on traditional or, or down view. So I really like it that way. It works really well, bass fishing or crappie fishing. The Garmin LiveScope performed how it always does and showed Clark and Michael exactly what was below the boat. But just like the previous day, they reeled in a whole lot of fish, but not a whole lot of crappie, at least not any keepers. So to keep things lively, Clark came up with a friendly little competition to close out their day. So we've had a little bit of a struggle, but one thing about it is we caught a lot of fish. No, and so a lot. you and I always have a little bet. Usually wait till kind of the end in the last 15 minutes, last 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, what the heck is going on here? We're not even done talking. But the bet is, is in the last 20 minutes, who can catch the most fish? Yeah. It doesn't matter what they are. We know there's all kinds of species here. There's drum, catfish, crappie, white bass. Black. Hold on, just a second. I'm stay just stay off the spot. I know it. you are. Trying to get the upper hand on me, but it's not going to work. We'll get up here, see what happens. Here's the deal. The bet is, it's who buys drinks on the way home, way home, which he usually loses, but that's okay. Crappie is worth two points. Keeper. Keeper. It's got to be a keeper. Keeper, crop, a, a non-keeper's worth one, yeah. and every other fish is worth one. And in 20 minutes, we're going to see who wins. One thing I realized pretty quick is we're getting a lot of bites and we're missing them. So I decided, well, I'm gonna cut my minute in half. And I think I caught a crappie, it was my first fish I caught. I catch a crappie, so I got one. So I'm thinking, you know, I like that, but I might make it a little bit bigger. So I cut the next minute in half, I use the head, and then I use the tail, and I start catching catfish. And Michael, he just decided he was gonna be hard-headed. No, Clark, I wanna catch a keeper crappie, I'm not gonna change. I had a bite on that cat. No, I bet you do. Look at that, right in it. Uh-oh, little two-pointer. That ain't no two point. We're gonna have I, to measure him and try to get 10 inches out of him and get two point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking he ain't gonna make it, but. Mm. Wee bit shy, but that's one, one nothing. When you say wee bit shy, you mean about two inches? Yeah, about. <laughs> you got one? Two. Number two. Halfway through and it's two nothing. You come out with my other half man in there? No, no, I'm not gonna go to your, I'm not gonna stoop to your level. All I can tell you is that's a mistake. I'm still hoping for a good fish. That looks like another catfish. Sure does. Three nothing. I should have just cut my minute, but I just, I couldn't make myself. I didn't want to stoop to his level. All right, we just moved. We've got about 10 minutes left. The score right now is 3-0, Clark's winning. The thing I don't agree with is we're, we're supposed to be still crappie fishing, but he's just totally switched up to catfish. To me, he's taking this just a little bit too far. I mean, I'm still hoping to have something to eat when we get back and get done, but. Just not sure I can agree with that switch. 
When we went to break, Clark had a 3-0 lead over Michael with 10 minutes left in the competition. But it's not over till it's over. That may be a crappie. Nah, too big. I don't think that's a crappie. Circling too much. Oh, it is. It's but you only got one point on it. I'll take it. Oh, I had one deck on it. Yeah, you can have him. Yeah. Three to one. You're making a run at it. It doesn't really matter how many we catch it. It's long. Oh, gosh. gosh. See, if you'd have been paying attention and not trying to talk smack, you might have caught him. <laughs> now, the thing about Clark is he doesn't hide the cockiness all that well. He catches one fish, and he is just on cloud nine. He starts talking trash, and it just doesn't stop. Nail in the coffin. All I gotta do is catch one keeper. One keeper and a catfish. You got three minutes. You better get with it. I didn't say the odds were great. Yeah, I like to win and I like to compete and it's always fun to have something to fish for at the end of the day. I tell you what, this fishing's pretty fun. It looks like it. I said we were gonna go till 10 o'clock, we got two minutes right now. Okay. You better pull a rabbit out of uh, I, I gotta do something. There's so many times that you've, you've won, caught fish all day, and then right at the end of the day, I'll come up with some bet just because that's just what we do. Well, what normally happens is we make a bet at the beginning of the day, and I'm winning that one. So you come up with another bet that's gonna override the original bet. Absolutely. I'd like whoever, whoever catches the next fish or whoever catches the biggest fish in the next 10 minutes, something like that. And it usually leads to me buying dinner or drinks or whatever it's gonna be. <laughs> I guess the one thing you can say about Choke Canyon is whether it's bass, because we've had some unbelievable bass trips Gosh, here, we've and crappie, some. we've had some unbelievable crappie trips here. But you're gonna catch something. Oh, you're gonna catch you're something. You're gonna get some bites of something. To, today, it was more like catfish and drum and yeah. brim and white bass it's been a and lot occasional of catfish. crappie. Lots of catfish. But that's okay. We still for had some, fun with it. For some people, that'd be a great trip. <laughs> well, when you come thinking you're gonna catch crappie, that's what makes it harder, but it's still pretty fun. Uh, it's been a good trip. Might be a good way to end it right here. Oh, hold on. Could have a keeper. If I'd have had scissors, I'd have cut your line right there. <laughs> I don't think he's a keeper, but it's a crappie. It's been fun. At the end of the day, I catch two, maybe three crappie and three, four catfish to his one catfish. I don't know what my total was, but six, five, six, seven to one. So it was victory. I'm buying food and drinks on the way home and uh, I'm fine with it. We have a good time every time we get on the water and you know we got a couple fillets of fish. We'll end up having a fish fry at some point and it was a good trip overall. Clark and Michael may not have run into flurries of crappie fish on this trip but that certainly didn't stop them from having a good time or from getting a couple of good digs in at one another. <laughs> Next time you head out on the water don't get discouraged when the fish aren't biting because there's always a way to turn a crappie situation into a positive one.